Hello dear student today we'll discuss physiology of pulmonary circulation it's as per the nmc competency py 5.10 so just to have a look of what is pulmonary circulation right atrium receive deoxygenated blood from upper and lower part of the body that is from inferior vena cava and from the superior vena cava this will go to the right ventricle now from here pulmonary artery arises and this blood will go to the lungs the pulmonary artery divides in two branches right and left it goes according to the right and left lungs now in the lung there will be oxygenation so main purpose of function of lung is basically oxygenation of blood that is loading of oxygen and removing the co2 from the blood now which is being which is later expired now this oxygenated blood returns back to left atrium through pulmonary veins so now this circulation from right ventricle to left atrium this is called as pulmonary circulation now in this diagram you can see it is receiving nine <clears throat> it is receiving 9% of the blood of total cardiac output but if you count the total full from the left heart now this blood will go to the left ventricle from here it will go to the aorta which goes to whole systemic circulation that means whole systemic circulation is receiving same amount of blood as the lungs are receiving see the difference in the systemic circulation you have got so many organs which are receiving the blood the liver the spleen the kidney the chatty the brain but here from the right heart only lungs are receiving this so the load which is being given to lungs or on to the pulmonary circulation is equal to the whole systemic circulation so high pressure is coming but despite that it is maintaining a low pressure so these are the special features so let's discuss how the lungs or the pulmonary capillaries are able to handle this situation so it is coming back from systemic arteries back to them so this is called a systemic circulation so these are the two circulation systemic circulation which is arising from the left ventricle and pulmonary circulation which is coming from the right ventricle so just have a look anatomy of the lungs now you can see these are the this is the trachea which is dividing to the branches called as a bronchi and later they, they divide to form the bron uh, terminal bronchiole and respiratory bronchiole ultimately to the alveoli now the alveoli are placed in three lower zones upper zone middle zone and the lower zone so this is very important just note it down that these are the important zones where the air is going from the trachea inside the alveoli and these are the places where we'll have the gas exchange now see the position of heart with respect to the lungs the hearts are located like this so but if you just again recall these three zones this zone is above the heart level so the pressure required will be more here that's why less amount of blood will come as compared to this one lower one which is now lower as this one so with the effect of gravity you can see the flow will be higher here and less here equal here so based on this also the perfusion of this three zones of the lungs will be different so this will have a great impact on ventilation perfusion ratio so we'll discuss during the last session of this one so just note down the anatomical location of lungs aorta and the heart because this is going to decide how much will be the perfusion of the lungs now here in this diagram you can see on the this side these are the all the bronchial tree trachea bronchi bronchiole terminal bronchiole like this and ultimately their end part is the alveoli and here you can see here there is addition of blood vessels so almost blood vessels are attached along with the this uh, terminal bronchioles so you can see the same tree will be there the blue tree is of the pulmonary veins the red tree of the pulmonary artery so almost 
bronchioles to your respiratory bronchioles veins and arteries these are all near each other so these are the places where there is actually respiratory exchange of gases takes place so now let's see the first special feature pulmonary artery is thin with a wall thickness one third that of a watt have a large diameter than their counterparts in systemic arteries this gives pulmonary artery pulmonary arterial tree a large compliance averaging almost 7 ml per millimeter mercury so the percentage rise of pressure will be less as compared to systemic arteries so which is similar to that of the entire systemic circulation so because of this thin wall and large diameter they are having a good compliance so despite heavy load the pressure in the pulmonary artery system is quite low which we have discussed during cardiac cycle so in this diagram you can see this is the aortic pressure curve where you can see the pressure is going from 0 to 120 mm of mercury so in the aorta highest pressure in the aorta is 120 mm of mercury on the contrary you can see this pulmonary arteries when same amount of blood is coming the pressure is only 25 mm of mercury in the pulmonary artery so this is what is the large compliance of pulmonary artery despite same load on pulmonary arteries as compared to systemic artery the pressure is quite low so this gives a better compliance now apart from that pulmonary circulation has got an auto regulation when pu2 that is partial pressure of oxygen falls below 73 mm of mercury normally it is almost 100 mm of mercury so because this that means almost it is a hypoxic situation we can see adjacent blood vessel constrict with diverting blood to ventilated alveoli because important thing is there should be exchange of of gases from the alveoli to the capillaries so if the alveoli are not having enough amount of oxygen so even if good amount of blood is there the the ventilation will be wasted so in that condition what is happening automatically when the oxygen level in any alveoli reduces the blood vessels in the nearby area constrict so that blood will be diverted to the other alveoli as where the ventilation is good so this is opposite to effect to observed in systemic circulation where there is a vasodilatation in response to hypoxia so in systemic arteries whenever there is a hypoxia or low oxygen level in any of the tissues of the body we say uh, <coughs> spleen or brain or any other there because of the hypoxia there will be vasodilatation but here it is opposite in the pulmonary circulation whenever there is a hypoxia there is a vasoconstriction reasons exactly is not known but undiscovered vasoconstrict substance is supposed to be released by alveolar epithelial cells when they become hypoxic so this is the proposed theory so that can be so maybe in the future we may might be able to find what is the vasoconstrictor substance which is leading to uh, constriction vasoconstriction in response to hypoxia so it is a second important feature of pulmonary circulation there is a vasoconstriction response to hypoxia then when we are doing a heavy exercise we observe that in systemic arteries the blood pressure rises but this can be dangerous for pulmonary circulation so again almighty has given a natural defense so the flow increases four to seven folds by increasing number of open capillaries three folds there are many capillaries which are dormant in the lungs but when the requirement is there they become open so by distending all the capillaries and increasing the rate of flow the pulmonary resistance again decreases so that extra amount of blood which is coming to the lungs during heavy exercise is being taken off by the capillaries which are normally dormant or closed now in this condition they get open and because of that you get pulmonary resistance again decreases leading to pulmonary artery pressure again rises very little so the capillary which are normally closed they get open immediately when the requirement is there so this will ca ca this will capture all the blood and compliance due to the compliance of again the pressure rise will be little as compared to the requirement so you can see in this diagram so when the cardiac output is rising here you know i'm not getting graph like this rather we are getting a graph 
like this format graph you are getting. So in the normal condition this is, but when cardiac output is rising, the pressure in the pulmonary artery, still you can see it is going up to this level only. So maximum it is going from 25 to 30 or more. Because it is very important that pressure should not rise. We will see the danger, dangerous condition which can arise if the pressure rises. This is the dynamic which is very very important. So we have to focus on this. So now this is the pulmonary capillaries and these are the alveoli and these are the lymphatics which are sucking the extra interstitial fluid which is accumulated and because of this a negative pressure is generated. Now there are various forces these are called as Starling's forces which are pushing uh, the fluid from capillaries to the alveoli and in reverse direction. Now the first let's see first pressure the hydrostatic pressure that is a actual pressure in the pulmonary capillaries which is 7 millimeters of mercury so it is pushing the fluid from the capillaries to the alveoli second the interstitial fluid pressure now this is the again this is the pressure called as interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure which will suck the fluid so again this will be pushing the fluid from uh, or sucking the fluid from capillaries to the alveoli in this direction this is because of presence of osmotically active substances in the interstitial fluid and third force is the this osmotic pressure so these three forces are basically leading to filtration from capillaries to the alveoli so because of this fluid will start accumulating in this fluid. can accumulate here okay now this is being prevented by a strong force which will suck the fluid back in this direction from alveolus to the capillaries this is that is the pressure present in the osmotic pressure present inside the capillary so because of the proteins present in the capillaries they will suck the pressure back and this pressure is almost 28 millimeters of mercury this pressure which is pushing fluid from capillaries to alveolus is 29 millimeters of mercury so the net difference filtration is of only 1 millimeter of mercury due to this small amount of fluid is coming here in between the capillaries and alveolus which is enough to glide the alveoli and to have a proper respiration. So here we can see pressure which from capillaries to the pulmonary interstitium is first is capillary pressure which is 7 millimeters of mercury interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure that is sucking pressure is 14 millimeters of mercury and negative interstitial fluid pressure is 8 millimeters of mercury. This is net 29 millimeters of mercury that is fluid will be forced from capillaries to the pulmonary interstitium. Reverse direction back to the capillaries it is plasma colloid osmotic pressure due to presence of osmotically active substance especially the proteins present in the plasma that is 28 millimeters of mercury. So total inward force is 28 so net filtration will be one millimeter mercury this is enough to maintain a normal amount of fluid but moment this pressure rises just imagine a person is doing exercise or any activity pressure is rising from seven to more this pressure will be increased from one it may go to four five this will lead to accumulation of fluid between pulmonary capillaries and alveoli and that condition is called as pulmonary edema and that will be increase that will increase the basically the gap of oxygen diffusion means the thickness of respiratory membrane will go on increasing this will lead to difficulty in respiration as well as transport of gas is affected so this will be a trouble for the patient so that is pulmonary edema is nothing but filling of pulmonary interstitial space and alveola with large amount of free fluid most common condition is left-sided heart failure 
means when the left ventricle is not pumping properly what will happen the pulmonary uh, veins which are emptying in left atrium they will be engorged pressure will be back on the capillaries and the pressure will rise and because of increased pressure net filtration pressure will rise and fluid accumulates mitral wall disease this is like if the mitral stenosis is there because of this blood will not go from left atrium to the left ventricle so back pressure will go consequently leading to pulmonary capillary pressure rises conditions like damage to pulmonary capillary membrane due to anything most commonly because of toxic gas inhalation for example any uh, toxic gas like uh, automobile exhaust or anywhere where you are getting large amount of if you fumes or smoke you inhale that can damage the pulmonary capillaries and that will lead to more filtration of fluid from the pulmonary capillaries to the interstitium leading to increased amount of fluid that is pulmonary edema or any infection of the lungs for example pneumonia or any infections come it can be happening like corona was there any infection which will damage is damaging pulmonary capillaries or any alveola the fluid will start accumulating there and will will get a difficulty in breathing or breathing noxious substances like chlorine gas sulfur dioxide gas or any other toxic gas inhalation that can lead to pulmonary edema now important aspect that is a pulmonary ventilation ratio normally we know that normally we are breathing 500 ml of air in each breath that is called stridal volume our we are breathing almost 12 to 16 breaths per minute so almost this is the ventilation 4.2 liters per minute is our ventilation and our cardiac output is almost 5 to 5.5 liters per minute so this ratio is almost 0.8 The difference occurs in this ventilation profession erosion in various parts of the lungs normally also as a result of effect of gravity and in disease condition so you can see these are the pulmonary capillaries so you can see here they become very thin that means amount of blood is very less in this perfusion is less and here you can see there are very thick that means high perfusion so this is nothing but effect of gravity so you can see in the upper zone these are the alveoli and you can see these are the vessels so they are thin in middle zone they are almost equal in lower zone they are fully open so there is more perfusion in the lower region but ventilation will be less in the uh, there is less ventilation in lower region because because air is float up so from here to there air will be more in this region and perfusion more in this region so upper area more ventilated but poorly perfused lower area more perfused but less ventilated due to this naturally as the amount of blood is less here in this region so this area is vulnerable to infection because we are having less defense because the blood is less wbc are less so this area is vulnerable to infection and oxygen is more that means ventilation is good so bacteria can survive well and because of poor uh, perfusion immunity becomes less in this region so again you can see the uh, importance of disease in different regions of the lungs itself length of lung is about 30 cm gravitational effect is 0.7 to 7 mm per cm of vertical distance so this represents a uh, 23 mm of mercury difference 15 mm above heart 8 mm below heart in standing position at rest there is a little flow in the top of the lung so when you standing again this becomes again more difficult but about five times as much flow in the bottom so here you can see the differences this here you can see ventilation is good perfusion is good so this will be the normal condition here you can see if there is any block in the ventilation but perfusion is good this will be again a diseased condition where despite having good perfusion there is a wasted uh, ventilation will not be there and here you can see because of any block in the vessel like pulmonary embolism and anything and that what happen when you are having a poor perfusion and good ventilation again it is wasted so this should be appropriate 
So here you can have either respiratory disorder can lead to VP disturbances or vascular disorder can affect the VP ratio. So when a patient is having a difficulty in breathing, we have to look in both angles. He may have a problem in the respiratory system like this or he may have a problem in the vascular system like this. Both will be related to defective oxygenation of blood. So just to summarize the special features of ventilation, they are having a large compliance despite having a large amount of blood, large amount of blood, the pressure system is low. There is vasoconstriction in response to hypoxia. In heavy exercise, pulmonary artery pressure rises very little. Ventilation perfusion ratio changes in the disease condition. So here we are completing the special features of pulmonary circulation. Thank you.